Here's Chris Atkinson. He's been hampered with mysterious handling problems all weekend. In service last night, he completely changed the setup of the Mini, so he's spending this morning relearning what the car is doing underneath him as he tries to reel in the Super 2000 Skoda Fabia of Sebastian Ogier. Well, that co hunts down Ogier. Oitanak is on the attack, chasing down his teammate Novikov. He already made up 16 seconds in the opening stage. On oh, using every inch of the road here. Evgeny, though, is looking to respond in this spectacular stage 10. The Russian M Sport driver is also pushing hard, not just chasing his equal best WRC finish, but one slip up from Miko, and he could be fighting for a first ever rally win. Not far from the end of the stage now, and he is on a flyer. It's a 9-12-9 for Novikov. That's a stage win, and he regains the initiative in the fight for second. Moving straight onto the 14 kilometers of Monte Olia, and that's a mistake from Thierry Neuville crunching into the tree. It really hasn't been his weekend. The Belgian, another restarting this morning. One driver certainly still in the hunt for points, though, is Mats Osberg. Norwegian has set himself the target of fourth position by the end of the day. He's certainly on course. It's keeping the power down through the technical finish of stage 11. Hundreds of spectators lining the stage. And he is safely through the hairpin that caught out Neuville. That is another rapid time from Osberg and Jonas Anderson. They continue to close on Atkinson and Ogier. Mads remains on target then. In the fight for second, meanwhile, Oit Tanak has done his best to keep the pressure on his teammate Novikov. Making up a minute is a big ask for the young Estonian, especially in this tight tree-lined road. Absolutely no margin for error. Pace notes again critical in here. Novikov, meanwhile, has been a different driver in 2012. His newfound control and maturity really paying dividends, as is his new partnership with Ilka Miner. Oh, but he's made the same mistake as Newville. Now breaking himself at the hairpin. It's going to cost a few seconds. He is back on his way. But again, it allows Tanak to close up slightly. Sardinian Road still proving tricky at times then. After the carnage of Friday, this has at least been a mercifully calm day so far for the rally leader. Even when driving with caution, really difficult here for Hirvonen to find any sort of rhythm while focusing on staying in the middle of the road. Morning loop is cleared with no dramas. Miko remains on course for win number 15. After stage 11, Hirvonen's lead has increased, but it is tighter in the battle for second. The M Sport boys within 50 seconds of each other following that mistake by Novikov. Osberg remains on course to catch both Atkinson and Ogier. Well, here's an unexpected visitor to the Saturday stages, taking to two wheels for a change. World champion Sebastian Loeb out of the rally, but keeping an eye on proceedings. Sebastian, it's still a crash helmet, but it's only two wheels instead of four. What's going on today? I broke two wheels, so I have only two left. Oh, what's going on? I just go uh, to see the rally with friends, and uh, that's it. <laughs> is it with the disappointment of yesterday, this is better to do this than come in the rally car? Yes, maybe. So, yeah, it's uh, not, not often that I can watch those are driving. Welcome back to the Rally Italia Sardinia, where we have been treated to a remarkable weekend of drama so far in the mountains above Olbia. The fourth and final leg takes in just two eight-kilometer stages to close out this bruising event. The rough technical Galura test lies ahead. It might be short, but packs a powerful punch. Malcolm does have his two M Sport runners in the top three, but it's been a frustrating weekend for the work sport team. Peter Solberg was devastated following his mistake on Friday. For now, though, he is focused on a consolation power stage win. The former world champ will be even more desperate to claim victory for Ford in Spain. And this is going to be close to his teammate Latvala's time. He is quicker in the power stage, but that's scant consolation after a disappointing rally. Well, just want to say really sorry to, to Malcolm and the, and the Ford team, you know. I, you know, I tried to do my best for everybody, but I, I failed, so 
I can't say anything else. Very disappointing, but my own fault. Back to that intriguing fight for fifth between Sebastian Auger and this man, Chris Atkinson. The Australian has had to give it everything to get back ahead of his S2000 running rival. Oh, but that was a big hit on a rock. And it doesn't sound good. Yeah, he's picked up a puncture on the front right. A really, really frustrating finish to the rally for Atko then. That's blown any hopes he had of regaining fifth. After surviving the bulk of the Sardinian stages, he's been caught out at the end in sight. Joining Max Osberg one last time on what's been one of his strongest events of the season. Oh, but I think he's in a rock as well. Well, he won't have had that in their pace notes. I think his tyre has stayed inflated, though. A lucky escape for Mads and Jonas Anderson. Their fourth place is secured. It keeps them right in the hunt for third in the championship as well. Big, big rock in the road. It looks like someone had placed it there. It was just around the corner in the middle of the line. Very big rock. I had no chance to avoid it. There was loads of people there, so it's... No one's put it there. I think it's stupid not to move it because they just stand there and watch it. But okay, that's how it is. There are still hazards out there to avoid, then, so this will be a tense and emotional last few kilometers for the top three drivers. First to come through is Tanak. After a roller coaster of a season, the Estonian finally has the result his undoubted pace deserves. It's a first ever podium for Oit and co driver Kulda Sik. I don't know, it's an amazing feeling. I was like getting some tears already like before the end of the stage, but uh, I don't know. I couldn't imagine that it's it would be that good feeling, but it's so nice feeling. Tanak safely home then, so can his M Sport teammate hold on for the runner-up spot. <laughs> Evgeny Novikov carefully picking his way through the tight and twisty gravel tracks of Galura. Unsurprisingly, none of these drivers interested in power stage points. The Russian rocket survives for the runner-up spot. And after a rough weekend for the works Fords, at least M Sport can celebrate a double podium. Yes, we are very happy. It was a great result and a great weekend uh, for us. We enjoyed a lot. So uh, it's, uh, it's cool. And here's our rally leader with the final stage snaking away in the distance. This might have been one of Mikko Hirvonen's easiest wins, but while his main rivals fell by the wayside, the Finn still had to bring the car home. Just the tight and twisty run towards the flying finish to come. There's the finish boards, and that is a proud moment for Mikko and co-driver Jarmo Leitonen. <laughs> it's their 15th career win, the first of 2013, and Hirvonen becomes the first non-Frenchman to win for Citroën since Francois Duval in Australia in 2005. An understandably emotional rally winner. There's confirmation that it was Solberg who claimed the power stage win with Latvala and Thierry Neuville also claiming bonus points, but it's Hirvonen he has the biggest smile. It's been a long period, for sure. I didn't expect to have this kind of rally, and uh, I'm still a little bit nervous. I, <laughs> it's like I won the rally first time, but you know, it just feels good, really, really good for for the sake of Citroen, and also, you know, I've been five times second here, so it just really feels so good finally win this rally. So Hirvonen takes the victory with Novikov a distant second ahead of his teammate Tanak. Osberg survives an eventful weekend to claim fourth and an incredible fifth place for Sebastian Ogier in a Super 2000 Skoda Fabia. So Hirvonen claims his first ever win for Citroen Racing in what has been a faultless drive across the weekend. His victory made all the more special, having finished in the runner-up spot on this rally in its last five appearances on the WRC calendar. The Finn, welcome back to service by the rapturous applause from the team. 
Sebastian Loeb already crowned driver's champion, of course. Sardinia marks another celebration for Citroen, though. Mikko's win confirms his second place and a Citroen 1-2, but the fight for third is still on, where it's advantage Osberg going into the final round. Citroen also wrapped up the Manufacturers' Championship in France with the four team now confirmed in second place. M Sport have third after their double podium. A trip to the Millionaires' Playground of Porto Cervo up the coast for the finished podium where the champagne will really taste so sweet for Mikko and Yamo. To finish first, first you have to finish. Sardinia once again, proof of that tale. The season finale takes us to the sun, sand and sea of Rally Catalunya in Spain. That's in two weeks' time. Until then, it's goodbye from Sardinia.